honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Max Kim, and I'm your MC for this afternoon's graduation ceremony for the class of 2016. At this time, I would like to acknowledge that we are on traditional territory of the Simk First Nations on behalf of the Belmont Secondary School, District 15, or 57. Yeah. We welcome everyone and thank all of you for being here. If the music is ready, we will begin graduation 2016 with the procession of grads. Please have your cameras ready to blind them. First off, we have Hunter Friesen. As you can see, we have recited this very many times. <laughs> Next up, we have Justice Fontaine Losa. Very nice choice of song, Justice. Very nice. Every day I'm shuffling. Robbie LaRondell, everybody. Darian Griffin. Cameron McKenzie. Grads of 2016, everybody, give it up. I would like now to ask Her Worship, Mayor Townsend, to come forward and offer her congratulations from the village of Elmount. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And a special uh, good afternoon to our gentlemen up here, the graduates of 2016. It is my very real pleasure to bring greetings from the village of Valemount, as well as congratulations. With only six of you, you are, it's really a special day for you today, isn't it? With, uh, with respect to um, a, a brief remark, I like to quote Albert Schweitzer, who is a Nobel Peace Laureate, as well as uh, renowned for uh, science, medicine, music. He was a musician. And I like uh, many of his quotes. They're very wise. Everyone today thinks about success. And he said, success is not happiness. Happiness is success. 
So as you look forward to choosing and deciding your future professions or careers, I want to uh, leave his remark with you that uh, if you choose something that's going to be making you happy, you'll be successful. So once again, on behalf of the Village of Valemount, I extend sincere congratulations and best wishes to the graduates for a very bright and happy future. Thanks. Would Mr. Bruce Weeb, school trustee, please come to the podium to address the graduates on behalf of our board of trustees. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Is that okay if I move this a little bit? There. I don't want to have to be bending over, although we're pretty well the same height. Um, first of all, I, I want to I say a, a thank you to, to Max, who is doing a great job as Master of Ceremonies. I never met a mic I didn't like, I just have to adjust it. Uh, I especially want to thank uh, Talia Dawson, who sang O Canada, what a great job. So thank you to you, young lady, wow. And I want to, I want to mention that coming up here, first of all, uh, I haven't even started my speech yet, but I want to say that what a great looking group of young men here. I feel like we're at a football draft, actually. <laughs> Good job. Uh, and and I, want, I want, uh, these gentlemen to know how special they are because I've been to a few grads in my lifetime and this is the really, I won't say the first time, but it's a special time where I've heard the principal cheering each graduate on by name. So congratulations to you and uh, special recognition to Principal Kinkle who, uh, who knows each one of you personally. Uh, so thank you to each of you. Well, let's get started. Good day to you. I am Bruce Weeb, school trustee. On this special day of your graduation ceremonies, I bring uh, congratulations to you on behalf of the Board of Education of School District Number 57. First, graduates, allow me to thank your parents. Parents, you have been your child's master teacher and will continue on in that role, sharing the ups and downs, guiding, supporting, and putting on the band-aids of life. You will continue to be a key part of your child's life, especially when they need you most. Congratulations to you as you enjoy your child's achievement of high school graduation. Second of all, graduates, please remember to thank your administrator, the staff, and all your school teachers from kindergarten to grade 12. These people have guided you on this journey. They were pulling for you, and wanted you to learn all you could so this day would be extra special for you. Third, remember your friends who have been there for you and appreciate their friendship. Their support and kindness are the threads that remain valuable to you throughout life. Now to you graduates. You have put in the effort and work to graduate from Belmont Secondary School. You are ready to enter the world with a more global view of life. Use your knowledge to better yourself, your family, and your community. Be yourself and see the good in the world around you. Work well with others, take care of yourself, be safe, and continue to grow in knowledge, skills, friendships, and experiences. Some of you have heard of football great Pinball Clements. At only five foot six inches tall, Oh yes, you're in metric now. That, that would be somewhere in about here. He set CFL yardage records, won four Grey Cups, and played against her very own School District 57 teacher, Matt Pierce. Clement said, 
don't tell me you can't do it because ultimately I'm a little guy from a little town who went to a little school who ran for more yards than any player in professional football history. You've got to know where you are from. When you're from Velmont, they know you're the best, the highest quality. If we all make that conscious decision to become the best, we are the best. Clement said of Matt Pierce that beyond football, Matt was a great dad, a great husband, a teacher, a mentor, a great citizen, and a great friend. If at the end of your life, people can say the same thing about you, you can say you were a success. Whatever goals you pursue, aim to do your best and you will know success. Congratulations, 2016 Valmont Secondary School graduates. Thank you, Mr. Weeb. I'd like to welcome Angela Sanderson and Fanny Peterson, representing School District 57, Aboriginal Education. Would you please stand to be recognized? There they are. Would Mr. John McClay, School District 57, Assistant Superintendent, please come to the podium to address the graduates on behalf of School District 57. First they have to raise it, now we have to lower it. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, graduates, parents, guests, staff, and students. There's one thing I really wanted to do before I retired, and that was to be able to memorize a whole graduating class set of names. <laughs> Hunter Justice, Robbie, Darian, Cameron, and Colton. Congratulations. The number of the people and parents and family and friends in the theater, gentlemen, is a testament to the importance of this ceremony. Have a look around and these people are really here to celebrate with you. Graduates, this is perhaps my favorite trip of all the graduations that I attend. I grew up in a small town not too dissimilar to this, and there's a couple of things that you will take with you. And you will remember, wherever you go, whatever you do, you had your roots here and your values are here. And so whether you go away, whether you stay, or whether you go away and come back, you will always have that with you. Graduates, this truly is a benchmark of what seems like an end to a beginning. I know there are numerous words and feelings your parents have to describe this time, but one does stick out more than others. Finally! <laughs> your parents are no doubt your greatest champions and are to be congratulated for the endless efforts in getting you here. A significant thank you goes not only to the staff and teachers at the secondary school, but also the elementary, including your kindergarten teachers. It's a 13-year journey to get here. It's the longest apprenticeship of your life. A few lessons that I believe are worth noting that I would live by if I was your age, they kind of fall under five attributes, just five things. And you already have these. You may not know it, but if you follow these five things, I think you'll do pretty well in life. And the first one is moral courage. Do have the moral courage to follow your heart your intuition. Right now, life has been orchestrated for you. You've been told what to do, when to come to school, you get weekends off, blah, blah, blah. But now you're the maestro. There's a whole world of learning out there just waiting for you to arrive. Second thing I think you need to have, which all of you have, and is resilience. Most successful people I know failed a whole bunch, but they did not give up. Failure is probably one of the best learning lessons that we can make. Be persistent, be resilient. This is what champions do. Third thing is risk taking. Follow your passion, stay true to yourself and never follow someone else's path. 
Fourth thing is commitment. Commit to a journey in life. Do not put the outcome as a goal. Take chances, learn, discover, explore. And to remember that your desire to explore is greater than your desire to not explore is really, really important. Stay on that track. Don't be afraid to take chances. And possibly the greatest value that I think we can all have is humility. Be humble. People will judge you on how you treat others and particularly less fortunate. Have a purpose to every day, be happy, and you most likely will not know this now. However, this school, Valmont Secondary, will have shaped the way you see the world and will continue to do so for the remainder of your life. Finally, never forget your friends and never forget your roots. Graduates of Valmont Secondary, congratulations on your accomplishment. I wish you the best of luck in your next steps. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McClay. Mr. Kinkel, I see you're already coming up to the podium. This is for uh, scroll presentations. Thank you, Max. Okay, this is my favorite part. Um, I look forward to this all year, and I've been looking forward to this for five years. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and I don't mean to get rid of these guys. Uh, as many of you know, um, these, these guys mean a lot to me. We've been through a lot together. And so, because there's, there's only six, um, plus one, Alyssa's out there somewhere, I know. And there she is. Um, uh, because there's only six, I thought I'd shake it up a little bit and tell you a little story about each of our grads as they come up. This guy came to our school with a pretty impressive rap sheet from the elementary school. We were all a little bit worried about what this guy was going to do when he got here, but we quickly learned that he actually liked high school. Whew, that was a bit of a relief. He always got his work done, and he knows the value of hard work. He sometimes has a big, tough reputation, but we actually know he's a gentle teddy bear. I'll miss our long conversations, me talking and him giving one-word answers. I also miss his strong presence and his quiet authority in the school. He has matured into quite the gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduate, Hunter Friesen. There has never been a kid more aptly named than this one. He has a very acute sense of fairness and justice. He is hot-tempered but warm-hearted. He knows his manners. He cares for everybody, sometimes too much. He's a very accomplished reader and a creative and mechanical inventor. He's one of our valedictorians today and our friendly neighborhood home hardware representative. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the graduate, Justice Fontaine Loza. <laughs> this young man returned to our school this year after an absence of many years. The last time he was here, it didn't start really too well, and didn't go really too well, and well, it didn't finish too well either. <laughs> but this time, things were a bit different. He's always been a free spirit. He thinks differently. He doesn't get too worked up really about anything. He goes with the flow and has fun doing it. He's a jokester with a big heart who's quick to forgive. And I always appreciated that if you asked him to tell you the truth, he did. Even if it wasn't always in his best interest. I got to the point where I'd tell myself, be careful what you ask him, Dan. 
you might not want to deal with the answer. <laughs> He's still now finish, uh, finishing his Math 11, uh, but you know, no hurry, it's only June the 4th. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the graduate, Robbie LaRondell. You guys can probably figure out who's next, right? <laughs> the mystery's kind of gone. I could have shaken it up, but I thought, keep him in order. This young man finished school very early. In fact, he completed almost all of his graduation credits in grade 11. So the wait to grad has been a long one, but we're sure happy he came back to celebrate. He was a master of keeping out of trouble himself while watching some of his classmates fall for his pranks. Well played well played. He's an active outdoorsman, an avid sledder, and a power, uh, power sport guy. He lost his fingertip one day. I asked him if he had pictures of the injury and he said, you don't want to see them. <laughs> so I took his word for it. We'll miss his big smile, his ever-present baseball hat, except maybe for today, and that very famous Griffin charm. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduate, Darian Griffin. This young man came to us as a very small and a little bit chubby fellow, full of his own ideas with a pretty long list of things he was not really prepared to do while he was here in school. He was a handful, but he was lovable, always thoughtful, always full of fun and adventure or misadventure. Look at him now. He's an avid reader. He's tall and slim, mild-mannered, polite, class valedictorian, and a mentor for youth. We'll miss his honesty, his dry sense of humor, his smirky smile, and that commitment he makes every Halloween to dress in drag. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the graduate, Cameron McKenzie. Last one. I made it go last on purpose because I know he hates sitting up on the stage. But he's doing really well. This young man was not a big fan of school in the early years. No. Nope. Had a hard time getting him here in the morning and had a hard time making him stay. But one day, he just flipped a switch. Was it the light at the end of the tunnel? Was it some career path that he, he decided he was gonna start on? Was it one small success he had in a classroom somewhere or a conversation he had? Was it his strange obsession with turtles? <laughs> we may never know, but he won most improved student that year. Mind you, he refused to come up on stage, but he did win. And he started to sport this rough hand look, dirt under the fingernails and, and grit. His hoodie, ever present, started to look a little bit greasier. And he just kind of had a different feel for who he was. And we appreciated that and we noticed. We're gonna miss the 12 month a year shorts that he wears the ever-present hoodie, the devilish grin. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduate, Colton Byford. <laughs> this is a time that I'd really like to um, allow you to come down and, and take some photographs. But before I do that, I'd just like to formally introduce the graduating class of 2016 for Valmont Secondary School. Let's give them a big round of applause.
would like to come up and take a quick group picture. Um, I'm sure these guys would love to sit here on parade while you do that. Revenge is sweet. Anybody, please? Stand up for a minute, guys. Stand up. Everybody up. Up, 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 up. You don't have to listen to me for much longer. Thank you, Mr. Kankle. And now, to begin the presentation of scholarships and bursaries, Ms. Julian Beeson will present QP Local 3742 Membership Bursary. Thanks, Max. Good afternoon, everyone. I am presenting the QP Local 3742 Membership Apprenticeship Career Technical Training Program Closed Bursary. Open to students enrolled in the Secondary School Apprenticeship Program or a Career and Technical Training Program who are the son, daughter, or dependent of a member in good standing of QP Local 3742. Congratulations, future electrician or welder, Darian Griffin. Thank you, Ms. Beeson. For the District Attorney Scholarship, Assistant Superintendent, Mr. John McClay. It gives me pleasure to present the Government of BC makes available to graduating students of School District Number 57 scholarships to candidates who have shown excellence in their chosen area of interest or strength. And your winner is Darian Griffin. For Alpine Country Rentals Bursary, Mr. Brian Hansen. I, ha I have to admit, I'm, I'm really delighted to see these young gentlemen dressed the way they are. Several months ago, they were talking about different camel patterns or things like that, just to sort of stand out. But I think they, they stand out by being such fine looking young men, and, and they will be good representatives of our school. Uh, before I present the Alpine Country Limited uh, Award, uh, I'd like to thank all the uh, local organizations, families, uh, and also organizations from out of town uh, who have contributed to uh, tonight's or this afternoon's uh, scholarships and bursaries. Uh, and to let everybody know that anybody who applied who met uh, the minimum requirements uh, does receive an award. So we try to give out the money to as many people as possible. And I wish these gentlemen well. Uh, I haven't been able to convince Vince Clark over the last uh, six years to actually present this award. He doesn't like the, the limelight, uh, so I'm doing it this year. Uh, so uh, it is going to a student who uh, perhaps um, is going to go into the trades or technologies, uh, and we have someone who fits the criteria this year. Uh, this young man might be crawling under skitters in the field, working in the warm confines of a shop, keeping our highway rigs motoring down the road, and most importantly, carefully avoiding all turtles. Colton Byford. And I just have to uh, mention that a couple of years ago when Colton won the most improved student, I was the one who presented it, and I had to go down into the audience to give it to him. So thank you, Colton, for walking over here. Thank you. For McBride, Minor Hockey Association Bursary, Mr. Dan Lawless.
I did that on purpose. John Cleese. Valmount Secondary Reform School for Boys. That's what this reminds me of. I think there's some funding in that for us. I have the honor of presenting the McBride Minor Hockey Association bursary. Uh, every year, McBride Minor Hockey donates a bursary to a graduate who has played minor hockey through their association. This young man has played in McBride when Valmont did not have a team. I believe he scored many a goals and got into a few fights as well, I believe. Keep your stick on the ice, Darian Griffin. For the Steve Shala Memorial Bursary, Mr. Rick Lalondell. <laughs> Lalonde. Good job, Max. So uh, I was gonna put together a little roast for these guys. I thought, you know, there's some pretty fine present presenters that started off early and I thought maybe I'd form a little quiz for these guys to see if they're paying attention to some of the accolades they were getting from uh, Mr. Weeb and Mr. Kankel. And Mr. Kankel had his own form though. That was, that was pretty good. That was entertaining. So it looks so far like, Darian, you're kind of cleaning up here. Good job. This is a happy day and this is a big day for families of graduates and the grads, of course. Uh, Early on, I noticed one slide, uh, and since uh, I know most of these families, well, and they probably know who I am, maybe. Anyway, I noticed that Darian Griffin, in one of the slides, he had an Oriental-style hairdo on top and <laughs> ponytail thing, and so please, Darian, tell us that that was, uh, you're playing dress up with one of your sister's pals or something, like, <laughs> anyway. So congratulations to all the grads on behalf of the Belmont Fire Department. Uh, you guys made it. You made a few steps this far, and you have a few more to make, and you can do it. We know you're all capable. You've got some abilities to look after the rest of your trek, and uh, your families are beside you to help you out there. So this winter sometimes lights the trails on fire for downhill courses when mountain biking and uh, he plans to maybe attend Nate. So Darian Griffin, congratulations. This bursary is presented to you today. For Vale Mount and Area Chamber of Commerce bursary, Mr. Mike Johnson. Good afternoon. This award is offered by the Belmont and Area Chamber of Commerce to support post-secondary education. Preference is given to applicants who demonstrate an interest in pursuing post-secondary education in trades-related training. Our winner will be attending the College of New Caledonia in the heavy-duty mechanics field. Our winner is Colton Byford. Mount Senior Citizens Club, Branch 106 Bursary, Mr. Rich Meyer. Good afternoon, graduates, family, friends. Many of you are probably wondering, what is the Valemount Senior Citizens Club? Well, we're a rather low-profile, small organization consisting mainly of seniors here in the village, but we are part of a larger provincial and national organization of a similar name. 
Over the last uh, 20 years, I've had the opportunity, I believe on two occasions, to attend the provincial convention, which was just held in May in the Okanagan. And one of the things I noticed when I attended these conventions, many, many other seniors clubs around the province do support the idea of supporting young people in the pursuit of higher education. And the Vailmont Senior Citizens Club are pleased to provide this bursary to a graduating student. The winner must be responsible, courteous, and polite, and demonstrate good overall citizenship skills. Our winner has a good interpersonal skills and demonstrates good citizenship skills. The recipient is Darian Griffin. For the Belmont Community Bursary, Mr. Dan Kinkle. The graduating class of 2016 and local businesses have together donated bursaries to our graduates. These awards are open to all graduates and not just ones that have applied for awards. The intent is to recognize all students' successes in school and the accomplishments of graduating and the love of uh, lifelong learning. The money can be used in any type of further training, be it first aid, flagging course, college, university, it doesn't matter. The graduation class, community business bursary, is a promise to provide a measure of financial assistance in the future. I'm gonna call them up one at a time. The first recipient this year is Cameron McKenzie. The next recipient is Justice Fontaine Loza. The third recipient, Hunter Friesen. The last recipient is Robbie LaRondell. For the Cecil B. McNee Memorial Lions Club Scholarship, Ms. Bard Shepard. Um, this uh Scholarship is being presented by the Vermont Lions Club in memory of Cecil B. McNee, a longtime member of the Lions Club. This award is given to a good citizen of the school and community in general. This recipient's family should be very proud of how far this winner has come in the last few years. Congratulations, Colton Byford. For Lakes District Maintenance Inc. Trade Scholarship, Mr. Rod Saul. Uh, thank you, Max. Afternoon, everyone. Graduates, congratulations. Robbie. Uh, Lakes District Maintenance Incorporated uh, award is offered to a graduate who plans to enter an industrial trade program, and our winner this year meets that criteria. He has been apprenticing as a heavy duty mechanic for the past two years and in plans to enroll in college to continue his education in that trade. Colton Byford. Would our graduates Cameron McKenzie and Justice Fontaine Losa please come up to the deliver the valedictorian address. Yeah, yeah, you got it. 
Okay, I'm just going to hold this. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending Grad 2016. First things first, we would like to start this speech off with an apology to our teachers. We know we haven't always been the easiest class to keep a handle on. Over the past four years at Valemount Secondary School, we, the grads, have learned a lot. Mr. Baker taught us any class can be a foods class. Mr. Hansen taught us to read a map and how to see through a camel's eyes. Ms. Doughty taught us some of the best things are at the top of the mountain, and yes, we mean the ice cream. Ms. Hubley taught us to color wheel and that some of us aren't as quiet as we thought. Darian. <laughs> Ms. Wetter taught some of us to manage our anger. Ms. I taught us being late for class wasn't acceptable. Mr. Lawless taught us how to grow things which could be helpful later. And Mr. K showed us that the principal isn't always out to get you. Miss Nicholas taught us that soapberry ice cream tastes just like it sounds. <laughs> Miss Mayprice taught us that you can be 52 and still look and act like a teenager. Jamie showed us that teachers can be friends with the students. And Miss Beeson taught us that late slips aren't as scary as we thought they were in elementary school. All of this knowledge will be valuable in our lives as we go forward. The one thing that we have learned through, uh, though, that is most important is the lesson we never knew we were learning. And that les lesson, put simply, was to cooperate with each other. If we didn't cooperate, not one of us would be here today. If it weren't for Cameron, I'm sure if any of you ate the food that we were making in foods class, you would have turned green. In Woodshop, if it weren't for Hunter, my table would have turned out looking like a broken accordion. Colton and Math made sure our answers were positive when we thought they were negative. If you needed an answer in socials, Justice could give it to you, no matter how far behind you were. Darian always seemed to keep the teachers busy. And Robbie, <laughs> and Robbie always made any class funny, no matter how boring you thought it would be. A common theme here is that despite our differences, nothing we accomplish is done alone. Rather, we need each other for support and coaching. Next, we would like to give a quick moment of appreciation for a few community members who have been there through these past few years. Thank you, Marion Plummer. Thank you, Sherry Heary, Conrad Br Rosma, and Clayton G. And a thank you to, to our parents for raising the young man you see before you. On a final note, one big thank you for the teachers, parents, and community members. Some lessons were hard to watch, I'm sure. Good job. Mr. Kenko will now give the graduation farewell address. I left it under the podium. I haven't seen if it's still there. Okay. It's still there. Um, good job on the valedictory speech, boys. It was really well done. Big round of applause for those guys. It's always funny, I always know who's doing the valedictory address because when I shake their hand, they're wet and clammy. <laughs> yeah, public speaking, eh? Graduates, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I often get questions about why I have an L on the window of my office. No, I'm not a loser. Well, not most of the time. And no, I don't have a learner's license. For me, it represents to the community and to the school that I have always been and continue to be a learner. In my school, my goal is not to pour knowledge into the heads of our students. My true goal is to instill and model a love of learning. I learn things every day. And most of my learning doesn't come from a textbook or a classroom lesson. It comes from my experiences and my failures, from my successes and my struggles. So with that in mind, these are the lessons that I've learned from you. I've learned. You can get a pretty decent tattoo in Valmont on a Saturday night. <laughs> Maybe not at first, but eventually comes out pretty good. I've learned that disc brakes on a mountain bike are very sharp. 
Don't touch your finger on the edge of one when it's spinning. I've learned if you respond to every question with turtle, eventually people will just leave you alone. <laughs> I've learned when it's really cold out, shorts and a hoodie are a very appropriate Valmont attire. <laughs> I've also learned that some of the students that you might least expect can actually be the most avid and well-read students in the school. I've learned that when a student gets in trouble, it is much more fun to call up the parents, hand the phone to the kid, and watch him explain what he did to his parents. <laughs> Sometimes, I've also learned, boys find taking apart a snowmobile a lot easier and more fun than putting it back together again. I've also learned that teaching these guys math for a month really highlighted what a crappy math teacher I am. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> I've learned that all mistakes, misbehaviors, and accidents are opportunities to learn. And we did. I've learned that I don't know everything and I make mistakes. Each one of these young men reminded me that from time to time. I also learned that each one of them has a huge capacity to forgive and to learn and to grow. I tried to use that information myself to become a better principal and teacher. Finally, I've learned that this fine group of young men are very likely sitting here politely wishing I would shut up and get off the stage as soon as possible. And since it is their grad, I will very soon oblige them. Thank you for the years together, boys. Thank you for the things that you have taught me. And thank you for deciding to shake things up a little bit and hold graduation in here. I think this is a truly special graduation ceremony and the place looks great. I would also like to thank your parents. It takes strong partnerships and teamwork to get across this finish line. It hasn't always been easy, but we have done it together and that's what it's all about. So, celebrate your achievement. You have earned it. Be safe tonight and congratulations, graduates. I would like to remind all graduates and their families that our cap and gown ceremony and school awards presentation will take place on Tuesday, June 21st at 10 a.m. Photo opportunities with cap and gown will be available then, and everyone is invited to attend. Now, before the beautiful grads come up and escort their grads off the stage, I would like to say something, and it's extremely improvised, so just tell me to shut up if it gets too long. I didn't come up here because they threatened to stuff me in a locker. That, that was a part of it, but it wasn't all of it. They asked me to come up here because they know me, and I know them. They're my great friends, and I'm really happy to see all of them graduating. Round of applause, guys. Now can the eye candy escorts please come up and escort their grads off the stage. <laughs> Colton Byford. Cameron McKenzie. and Hunter Friesen, the graduating class of 2016. This concludes our ceremony. There's going to be a dinner at the Best Western at 6 p.m. You all can come if you want. You don't have to. You can.